You know, I'll just my notes are something that we're all working on as saxophone players, and it's hard to get right, particularly if you're getting started. But there's a guy that is fantastic at Altissimo that is a real inspiration for me called Tom Pollitzer who plays with Tower of Power. Here, check this out. Okay, check this guy out. Tom Pollitzer, this is mega. Whoa, did you hear that? Absolutely amazing. Tom is amazing at those altissima notes and in this video today, I'm gonna to share what Tom told me about how to get those super high altissimo notes. Well, g'day guys, Nigel Lou from Sax School. Tom Pollitzer is absolutely amazing, and you know Tower of Power are one of my favorite bands. And I think if you're a saxophone player and you've not checked out Tower of Power, you gotta do it, man. Tower of Power are amazing. So many great players have come through that band, like a legendary who's who of, of great saxophone players. So I reached out to Tom recently and we filmed a guest session for Sax School. So it's like an hour long session where he shared loads of tips about how he does this altissimo. How, we'll get to that in a second actually, but also about reads, about practice techniques, about vibrato, about performing. I mean, there's just a, like a proper brain dump of things in that guest session. And uh, actually, if you want to check it out for members, for Sax School members, it's available in the members area, along with some other cool guest sessions like 700 other lessons, all of our mini courses, our student pathways. If you want to join and uh, check those out, uh, there's a link below where you can get started with that. So anyway, I asked Tom on this guest session about altissimo. How does he get those super high notes on his saxophone? And how does he even start about practicing those techniques? And check this out, this is what he said. Well, I went back to uh, my Sigmund Rosher book, Top Tones for Saxophone. I went back to that book and started doing some of those overtone exercises again. Oh yeah, that's what he's talking about. Top Tones for Saxophone by Sigurd Rascher. I've had this copy for like 25 years. Look, Paling's Music, $9.95. Fantastic. This is like the holy grail of overtone exercises. And it's, it, it is the, the place to go if you want to work on those overtone skills. Actually, I've also created some lessons in sax school that will sort of walk you through this in an easier fashion. But that's what he's talking about. I always would tell students, you know, like on saxophone, you know, anytime you squeak, right? When you, when you guys out there and you squeak, you just hit an altissimo note. It may not have sound pretty yet, but you just hit, a, it's a pitch, right? Every squeak has a pitch to it. So that's something you can always experiment with. Um, you know, just, you know, if you, if you bite the reed, right, it's going to squeal, right? And you, you blow aerial at it, but it doesn't sound pretty <laughs> yet. Um, doing the overtone series really helps. Um, and also the work I've done too, I want to talk a little bit about the work I've done with uh, Mara DeJoya, who's the Reed Geek guy. You guys all know about Reed Geek. Oh yeah, sure. The Reed Geek's uh, brilliant. Yeah, we've talked about that quite a lot. Mara has really taught me how to profile my read to even make it easier to play altissimo because some, sometimes, you know, I, I have to go through reads and tweak them if I want to play, a, you know, like if I want to play above a G, like that, that first, you know, from G to G is like, but if I want to, Try to play higher than that. I'll be honest with you, Nigel. Above that high G, I'm just starting to get control of it. Um, if you can, I demonstrate. Sure, I'd love I mean, to. Love to. I mean, I, so there's a G, right? So up to there, I'm pretty fluent, right? So <clears throat> once I get above that G, I'm finding that <clears throat> there are no fingerings really, you know. So I did that all with my with my lip and my tongue position and my air. So I, I was not I wasn't changing any fingerings. I was actually fingering like a low B or B flat. And I was and and I was watching uh, and so now I'm starting to get as you can see now now it doesn't sound so shrill as it used to. I'm starting to get some tone up there. And Lenny said I go I, I asked Lenny, I said, how do you make those high notes sound so pretty? And he goes like just put vibrato on them. So Lenny is Lenny Pickett. This guy with the big hair here, he was like one of the iconic players right at the start of Tower of Power, back in the 70s. He's the guy in all those really famous albums from back then. And he was a real inspiration for Tom about the altissimo really up high because Lenny Pickett is kind of like a real guru at those super altissimo notes. 
and he was teaching Tom how to do it. And he showed me because he held a note out and then he used to put some, and it's hard to put vibrato up there because you can't, you can't wiggle that note too much because you'll lose, you'll lose the pitch. So it's, it's a, it's a fine line. I don't know how I, I between the read and just going for it and, and missing notes constantly is how I got to where I'm starting to get some control up there. Right. But I can't do what he can. I, I, the next phase of my practice is what I need to do is I have to like, I like to sing the note, hear it in my head, and then I'm hearing the wind way up there and then see if I can hear it. Almost got it. So that was the note I was trying to hit. Wow. But it's, all by, it's all by ear and feel at that point when I hit that note. And that's what Lenny told me. He says, yeah, he says, I just hear the note I want to hit and I can, you know, and he'll play you can play like you can do melodies up there. Um, yeah, that's cool. When you when you're talking before there about you making the you know that top octave, the highest octave there, using your 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 lips and your tongue and your air, can you sort of break that down? Like, what what are you doing? Are you moving your tongue forward, backwards, up and down? What 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 is it that's making the different pitches? Um, you know, I I, I in talking to my friend. Uh, and a friend saxophone player is saying, yeah, you're moving your tongue. And I'm not even aware that I'm moving my tongue into different positions. For me, what I've always felt when I hit those notes is where my lip is on the reed and how much, where it is on the reed and how much pressure I'm putting at that point. I'm not like, I mean, I'm not taking a bunch of mouthpiece and squeezing the end. I'm still staying pretty much where I play when I normally doing it more with my jaw pressure than my tongue position right my just i'm just gonna I, I i am definitely increasing pressure down the reed when i go higher um and my tongue is doing what you know i don't consciously know what my tongue is doing I'm, I'm gonna have to figure that out so i can teach it more yeah um, it's tricky though when those movements are so small. I think it's even the same with the first, like students that are trying to get that first octave in the altissimo. I think that's one of the things they struggle with as well because, and I, in fact, I remember, I don't know if you remember the first time I was trying to play altissimo, uh, it, it's difficult because you can't see, no one can say to you, well, you move your tongue three millimeters forward and it's, it's not as simple as that. It's, it, you kind of need to feel it and, uh, and experiment. So I'm guessing it's a similar kind of thing. You have to go in there and make some awful noises. You have to practice, and it sounds god awful. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. really does. When you do those those overtone exercise in the Top Tones book or the Sigmund Rosher book, <clears throat> and you you know you know what I'm talking about, Nigel. Absolutely, right? I love that book. I've got a copy of it. So I'm just, yeah, I did all that off a low B flat, right? You've done that before. Sure, yeah, man, absolutely. Uh, it's an invaluable practice. Do you still work on, on the overtones like that? Yes, I do. I've been trying to make myself do it more because I try to I try to do long tones. On, and that's the only long tones I'll do. It's like, you know, some of those those mid upper ones, the notes that just are hard to hold out. And yeah. them sound. I find as, as more I can lock in and hold that note, um, I find it improves the tone in my altissimo. Hey, you're still here. That's awesome. That tells me that you really wanted to move your saxophone playing ahead, which is fantastic. Thanks for sticking around. You know, that session with Tom was amazing. He is a really interesting guy who spent a long time thinking hard about the way that he plays saxophone. And he shared so much great information inside the full guest session that we've got inside Sax School. Stuff about um, reeds. It was really interesting, actually, uh, the way he's adjusting his reeds to get a better sound, his mouthpiece, the way he's practicing the way he's approaching, uh, approaching uh, working on things like technique, all sorts of things, really, really interesting. So remember, if you wanna get access to the full guest session, that's available to SAC School members inside the members area, along with our student pathways, which are a fantastic way to really move your skills ahead. 
plus loads of mini courses, over 700 video lessons for alto and tenor sax, our master classes, tons of stuff. So use the link below and jump in and get started. And I'd really like to see you in sax school and help you make some great progress in your saxophone too. So keep practicing hard, it's great to have you on this session. Don't forget that you should subscribe if you're not already and click the, um, the bell icon too so you get notified when I'm making new videos because I'm doing it all the time to help you make amazing progress on your saxophone. Keep practicing hard. I'll catch you next time.